Well, hello, welcome back. I'm Mike Festiva, and this video series is going to be all about drawing 2D in Fusion 360, so you can actually draw some cool files and actually cut them out on a CNC plasma table. Why 2D? Because that's all we really need for cutting flat surfaces on the CNC plasma table, and it's about the simplest way to start drawing in Fusion 360. So we're going to cover a wide range of stuff. We're not going to be doing much drawing, if any, in this first episode here. Basically, I want to talk about what the series is going to be about. If you want to draw up some good parts, you need to usually measure stuff in the real world, physical parts. And there's a wide range of things I have here and tricks that I like to use. Pretty affordable. There will be links to most of these things down below on Amazon where you can find similar or the same tools. I use these all the time. So I'm going to show you guys how to draw up parts and things and take measurements. Get it down on paper. Maybe even cut a few pieces out on cardboard if you actually have to make sure one part fits into another part very well. And then another series will go over actually importing all those measurements into Fusion 360. But that series right there, when we start getting into Fusion 360, I'm going to just assume you guys don't know anything about it. That's how I started. I didn't know anything about it. I would have loved to come across a series like this when I first started. But I just dug around video after video, and a lot of them were way too complex and more 3D modeling for printing and stuff like that. It just wasn't relevant to me. You guys are going to have to be patient. The few of you subscribers that are actually watching this, this video is going to be very helpful for you if you're just getting a plasma table, ordered one, or have been struggling with it. I'm going to walk you guys through how I like to use it. Keep in mind Fusion 360 is a fast giant program. I probably use only 15% of it and I'm sure there's a lot of different techniques I'm not utilizing in there. But if you guys are familiar with my series, it's all the stuff I've cut on my plasma table from my articulating dump truck and now the mini Pinsgauer. I can get my way around that program pretty well and draw out most any part I need to. So enjoy the video guys. We're going to move on to some tools here and talk about the principles of measuring parts in the physical world and then how we're going to actually put them into Fusion 360. All right, enjoy the series guys. So here's a wide range of tools I use. These are all pretty affordable and if you do any metal fabrication in your shop, there's a great chance you already own these things. I'm going to start off with some of the simplest. piece of cardboard, a box knife. You can use this for cutting out actual physical parts if you're really trying to double check your fitment and you really want to do that before you actually start putting anything into Fusion 360. A Sharpie marker for marking metal, a ballpoint pen, and some pad of paper for marking down your actual rough draft of what your parts are going to look like and what you really want, your true measurements. A set of digital calipers, these are super useful. I use them all the time. They actually have three different modes on them, fractions, millimeters, and thousandths. So you can bounce back and forth, especially if you're actually working on cutting parts for something that's like on a metric machine, like a quad. And you can actually measure metric and then figure out the standard equivalent. I would highly recommend getting if you're going to start drawing Fusion 360, it really helps you out. Of course, a simple tape measure, a magnetic level, a little adjustable carpenter T-square, I use this all the time, and a digital angle finder. I like these digital angle finders. I'm sure you can get one with that's not digital, but this works really well. This is a super useful tool. I actually bought this when I started on the articulated dump truck because I actually had to measure something like a Subaru Bell housing on a transmission and figure out all the bolt hole placements and everything was in some weird weird angles so on a bell housing there's nothing that is actually square or any holes that are in line well in line at an odd angle so this thing was super useful for me to cut my bell housing plate for that probably cost you I don't know, 75 bucks or something like that for everything here and you will not regret owning all these things. Why the level? So you can actually put it on certain parts and pieces. A lot of times when I start measuring parts, I want to find a reference. Maybe two bolt holes, or vertical or horizontal, or something along those lines, or a corner of a part, and then I'll measure off of that and find all my reference points from it. We'll get a piece out here and we'll start measuring. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so we're gonna start off with a really simple part because uh, this is a little four bolt flange bearing for a one inch shaft. I used a lot of these on the articulating dump truck and I just wanna have real world settings so you guys can look at these parts and be like, okay, I see where this is going. And from here, we'll get into more theories on parts and just show you different things like slotting tools and hole pattern tools and things like that in Fusion 360. But right now we're gonna take this little part, I'm gonna sketch out the drawing and I'm gonna explain to you what I got going here. 
throughout the series will evolve in a few more complex parts. Just want to really get you guys used to drawing. I really want you guys to follow along when I start drawing in Fusion 360. That's what I ended up doing. I found a few little series that were helpful, but really didn't explain everything super well. And basically, I just watched it on my little iPhone and then drew in Fusion 360 on my computer. Repeatedly did that and I started to get more and more familiar with the program. So I highly recommend when I do a drawing video, start to end drawing, watch it on a device and start drawing it on your computer. Keep doing that and out of repetition, you'll get the hang of it. I promise. All right, let's go measure this part and I'll show you what's coming up next. So we got the part here. We're gonna figure out the whole size here. I think roughly it's 7 16 Now my kerf pattern and everything on my uh, CNC, the way I have it set on the program, I like to go any hole if I want to cut a hole later on and just drop the bolt through without any clearance issues. I usually go up from the original bolt size by 3 64th. So that will be 31 64th is what we're going to cut these holes size to. Digital calipers are super useful for that. So I'm going to write that down. All right, so I'm gonna start taking some measurements here and we're gonna figure out this. When I'm gonna measure like a whole pattern like this from side to side, I always drop the caliper in on one edge of it and measure to the other edge. You don't have to try to figure out where the center is. You can just measure from this side of the hole and then this side of the hole with the calipers and you can figure it out. It looks like it's two and three quarters of an inch. These are super useful for precise measurements. So I'm just gonna draw out our hole pattern here basically a square and I just like to put little lines on here a little arrow representing that that two and three fourths inch I usually put a C with a line through it that's just the way I remember that's center for the holes and of course that pattern we can double check but it should be a square pattern and it is so we know that but I'll just mark it on here for reference a little C with the line through it for those holes. Now we got to figure out the center of this thing. It's a one inch bore. And we're going to oversize that a little bit for some clearance. We're going to go to the outside of this hub. Let's go for an inch and three eighths is a good center hole. Roughly draw a hole in the center there. One and three eighths inch center hole. We need to figure out the outside of this flange bearing. It's three and three quarters. That's a simple number, but I'm going to bring it up for if we're using this in a real case scenario and might want to weld some plates next to it. We're going to just bring it right up to four inches. Let's see where that gets us. That's like that. That's about an eighth inch on each side there. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to draw a line around this and that's going to be four inches by four inches. All right, so the simple bearing part we measured here, as you guys see, a real simple way to go around this, mainly with calipers. And we got all those specs on paper here. This just kind of gets you in the mindset of thinking this way, how to start measuring parts. And as the series goes on, you'll get more complex with it. People start figuring out angles and reference points. We'll get into that later. The Fusion 360, there's so much to take in that I'm going to show you a few simple little tools first. And as the series evolves, you're going to start understanding how to get around on the Fusion 360 more and use more things. Basically, all we need to do is make four lines and make a box or do the rectangle draw and draw a square. Reference four holes around the outside edges and one in the center. Very simple, not much to it. But as I said, like you can follow along, start scratching the surface on Fusion 360. I haven't ran it before. I start figuring out these things. And as the series goes along, we'll get into a little bit more complex parts with some more angles, slots, different things like that, and hole patterns. This is very simple and uh, it's a good little starter one. And you can kind of see how you can take a part like this in the real world. We can draw a mounting plate for it in Fusion 360. And uh, towards the end of the series, we'll actually take these drawings cut them out on some metal so you can see what we're talking about here. So we're not going to get to any drawing in this episode, but I want to actually go over workflow in Fusion 360, where you want to start and where you want to end in that program and how you get your files to fire control. One of the first things I want to mention here before we even start moving around this program at all, do not try to even use your laptop flat little mouse here. I was so frustrated the first few days of trying to originally draw in here. I couldn't zoom in, zoom out, drag parts around. This doesn't work very good in Fusion 360. Do yourself a favor, buy a $15 little mouse. It needs to have a little roller knob up here. I think all of them have it because it's also a button. So basically with that roller knob, you can actually zoom in, zoom out, and you can grab on the screen and move around and look at different parts. So that is a must. Just do yourself a favor and get one of those.
Like I said earlier, we're not actually going to be doing much drawing in this episode. That's going to be for the next future ones. And we're going to start off with a real simple drawing like this bearing plate. And we'll move on to slots and hole patterns and different things like that. In future episodes, I just want to keep it simple. It's going to take a whole 15 to 20 minute episode just to show you guys all the tools. There's so much stuff in this Fusion 360. I don't want to just bombard you guys with it all at once because it can be overwhelming. But I'm going to actually talk about workflow real quick before we end this video. Basically, when you open up Fusion 360, you're actually going to open up uh, Design right here is where you draw all your parts and pieces. And this is where you get all your measurements and everything like that. You can duplicate. I usually like to nest all my stuff in here and just make the final uh, drawing that I want to export to G-Code. From here, you will extrude it, which will make it look like a metal plate on the screen here. And then you'll go down to manufacturer keep in mind a year and a half ago when i started learning fusion 360 they switched name to manufacturer all the older tutorial videos said to look for some other button which wasn't on here anymore I, that's one thing i hate about uh, programs is they'd like to change things constantly so that's kind of frustrating but it's called manufacturer now and you click on that this is what your extruded part will look like the, this gray part right here and here's where you'll get your zero reference points things like that and then you'll actually work on Tool pass, picking out your tool pass. If you want to cut the inner holes out first and then cut the main plate out, you'll select tool speeds, pierce times, all that stuff. And then you'll go up towards the top of the manufacturing part here and you can export your G code and name it and all that and save it to a file on your desktop or wherever you might save it. And then after that workflow, you'd open up fire control for Langmuir systems and you'd import that and that part would come in as a line drawing in fire control. And from there, you can zero up your piece of metal to make sure your part's going to fit on whatever scrap metal you're going to cut it out of. And then you hit cut and you got a beautiful part finish. So that's kind of the basics of workflow. I know I just brushed over this, but we'll go into a lot more detail in the next episode. One of the last things I want to mention is this tutorial series I want to make to help out some of my subscribers and non-subscribers that don't understand anything about this project and this programs. It was kind of a daunting task for me. It took me a little while to figure out. But the problem is it's going to take my channel for the next few months because I'm going to try to drop these videos every other week with the mini Pensgauer video coming out. So it's one of those things, though, that YouTube, if they see that you're making videos that not many of your subscribers or other people are watching, it's not the most exciting series, but it's going to be very educational. YouTube will not promote that video or your channel. It happens to me on occasion if I'm producing videos that are educational and not many of my subscribers watch. So it's kind of a bummer because I want to produce more educational videos for everybody, but YouTube will not get behind educational videos. Their algorithm just drops channels like that. It is really frustrating because I want to make this good series. I want to show people, but it's going to be at the cost of my channel not being promoted for the next few months. It's going to be a fun series. It's going to be super useful. I wish something like that existed a few years back when I was trying to learn Fusion 360 but it is not going to be beneficial for my channel at all. So if you guys enjoyed the video and what I'm trying to do here, give it a thumbs up. Try to leave a comment down below. That helps promote the channel and the video. But YouTube is not going to get behind this because it's educational. All right, you guys, until next time, thanks for watching it. Keep eye on the next video. Hit that notification button because we will be drawing that basic bearing part. And the future videos will be doing a little more complex drawings of complex drawings. And then we'll move on to tool paths and explain all that stuff and really physically cut out some parts. All right, until next time, take care, guys. Bye.